Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you're joining from, you could correct me on chat. Let me know what time it is for you. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining and joining on time for our speaker session today. Uh, our topic being preparing students for the world of work. The intersection between employability and entrepreneurship in higher education institutions. So welcome to this session today hosted by the employability track team, uh, part of the education collaborative. And we're looking forward to engaging with you all. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Baslai, for coming on camera. I appreciate. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good find you. Good, good. Thank you so much. I see everybody. I see you, Yoni, Anna, Grace, Amoa. This is a great time for you to come on camera. Let's check and see if your camera is working so that when you actually want to talk, you know, it will be able to happen. Kiru, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Evanson, right for me in the chat where you're, you're joining from. We really want to get a feel of, you know, where, where is everybody? Where is everybody joining from? And you might just find some neighbors in the chat. Eh? So it's good to talk. Evelyn from Ghana. Okay, I see Ghana is leading. Uh, Aravinda, do you have your people here? Okay, we want to know who's leading. Priya, 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 <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Jolene, great. Rita, I hope if you can stay online, stay on camera so that it feels like we're more, you know, we're running at each other, but it's not like we're just talking to, to names. Amoa from the University of Professional Studies, Accra. Awesome, great, great, great. And I see you're representing with your African shirt. Anant from Botho, aha. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Let me go back to gallery view. So welcome, I see we have people who are still joining, but we are ready to go. Again, the topic of what we are handling today is really on preparing students for the world of work and the intersection between employability and entrepreneurship in higher education institutions. And so today we're going to delve, delve deep into this topic um, and we're going to go even deeper during the, the convening and we'll talk about it at the end of the session. But basically we want to explore the intersection between employability and entrepreneurship. Let's see how we're thinking in our institutions about employability. Is it holistic? Is it siloed? Is it segmented? You know, how are we viewing entrepreneurship and career development? And, and how is our employability programming running in our institutions? Is it the way we should go? Should we change? Is there something we need to add? Are there gaps in our thinking? Are there gaps in our programming? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Welcome, welcome everybody. So many people joining. Thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Jean, I see you from Kepler. Kepler, who? Great. Uh, Rita from Kumasi Technical University. Ghana, you guys are representing. And Dr. Hussein from Uma University. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. So today we let me let me give you the lay of the of the day. Okay, the hour and a half. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna have a uh, we're gonna run a poll and we're gonna see where we are at in terms of our thinking around employability and entrepreneurship and career development programming. And then we're going to go into a panel. And in our panel today, we are going to, um, to have three distinguished uh, members of our employability community. The first person that I'm going to introduce is Abigail. And Abigail is a figure Welbeck. is a director of career services at Ashesi University in Ghana. And she has over 11 years of work experience in career services and a very strong track record in assisting students and young adults in self and career reflection um, and awareness, career education and development. And so we're really, really honored to have Abigail. The other person that I'm going to introduce today is Dr. Amatifo. Uh, Dr. Edward Amatifo is a Center for Entrepreneurship and Small Enterprise Development Director and the head of the Business Incubation Center at the University of Cape Coast, Ghana. Karibu sana, Dr. Amatifo, happy to have you here. Um, and then we also have uh, Aravinda. Aravinda Ram is a Deputy Pro-Vice-Chancellor, Employability and Technology 
at Boso University. And Amida, you must be happy. You're represented. Your people, your tribe is here. Um, and she has led student career development initiatives for the past 10 years, including internships, graduate placement, entrepreneurship, and industry partnerships. And something notable about Aravinda is that she was a project lead for the VTI Employability Self-Assessment um, and Digital for Private Tertiary Education Providers uh, project. And so we are very honored to have this distinguished panel. Before we come to you, our dear panelists, thank you for being on camera. I just want to see on chat if there's any anything coming up. Uh, Kenya School of Civet, Dr. Sasa Banad from bon Cameroon. Great, good to see you. Uh, we have representatives from Nairobi, Dr. Peter Bankole, Frederick from Nigeria. So our panelists, as you, as we as you're engaging, you can you can see that we have people from Rwanda, Kepler. Um, yeah, so thank you all for joining, and we'll go directly into the into the poll. I'd like us to launch the poll. You will see the poll pop up on your end, on your screen, and I'd like you to, to fill it. There it goes. First question, the question really, what, to what extent is entrepreneurship considered a part of the career development programming in your institution? Let us know. Yeah, I see the responses coming in. To what extent is entrepreneurship considered a part of the career development programming in your institution? As you do that, I just realized I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Cecilia Waihenya and I'm the head of career services at USIU Africa, which is in Nairobi, Kenya. And we'll meet if you come to the convening in Ghana, if you'll be there. Great, I see the responses coming in. So about 80% of us are saying this to, to a significant extent, we are already doing this. So entrepreneurship is considered part of the career development programming. Um, about 4% at the moment um, are saying, no, we are not yet uh, doing it. And then 17% are saying not yet we are planning to do so. So we have a majority of panelists. We have a majority of our, our audience today saying that they are already to a significant extent um, <laughs> having entrepreneurship um, a consideration in their career development programming. So it's, it's, it, that's beautiful because we're going to look at how we can maximize outcomes around employability for that. So, can I um, end the poll? Do you want me to end the poll? Yes, I think. I... I think... Okay, I'm going to share the results now. Share so that everybody can see. Okay. Share the results as I try to deal with the sun in my face. <laughs> okay. Can you see? Yeah, thanks. Okay, I great. think you can all see the results there. Are you able to see? Great, so we are at 80 significant extent, 4% uh, not yet there, and then 16% uh, planning to uh, go that route. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, for that. So panelists, welcome to the stage. I see you already on the stage. Um, um, those of us who are just watching, can we clap for them virtually? You can go to your reactions tab and just let them know that you're happy they are here and that they're going to talk to us, eh? right? Yay, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. So I'll begin with you, um, <clears throat> Abigail, and I'd, and I'd like you to just, um, um, just kind of like begin to give us a foundation of the conversation that we're going to have today. Um, around the dynamic, this dynamic between entrepreneurship and, and career development as, and why it, it is something that we need to think about. And just in case there's someone in this, in this uh, call, I doubt, who is wondering, but why, why is this an issue? Maybe just Abigail, give us, give us that feel and that foundation of why this dynamic between entrepreneurship and career development is something that we need to discuss today. Thank you. Absolutely, Absolutely. thank you so much, Celia. And thank you so much, everyone. Looking forward to, to engage with you today. So yes, um, definitely, like we're seeing from the polls and good number of our institutions 
are already doing something in that area, but what I'll say is um, we, are, we all have room for improvement when it comes to just synthesizing the efforts between um, the two units as entrepreneurship and career development. And there are just a few factors to, to keep in mind um, in terms of, you know, maybe why some institutions either are not thinking about it or it's now something that is, is being talked about um, and wasn't the same in the past. And I guess one of the dynamics to consider is um, for a long time, finding jobs, not necessarily career development, right, has been the career pathway focus for most institutions. And rightly so, because parents see the supreme return on investment as finding jobs. And so there wasn't that much opportunity for students, for example, to find out what they're good at, which could be entrepreneurship or working in um, an organization, not to talk of the, getting the opportunity to explore what they could be good at, right? This is what career development provides, or I should say should provide. Um, unfortunately, more institutions are beginning to understand this need and are beginning to implement strategies um, to support this. Another factor to consider is that entrepreneurship, at least in Ghana, has gained really great traction over the last decade or so. And mainly because, you know, the lack of jobs, the, there's been lack of jobs of graduates that have like skill gap, right? We've heard so much about the skill gap, where, which makes it difficult for young people um, with some form of education to actually um, even just be able to solve problems around them or even in an organization, which is like an entrepreneurial mindset. And so for most institutions, entrepreneurship is now becoming a much stronger focus area. Even for Ashesi University, the approach to entrepreneurship education has definitely been refined and gained stronger roots over the years. We currently have an entrepreneurship center, which we did not have before. Um, and the, we had several programs and initiatives around it, but now we have a center that coordinates all of that. So the, the coordination between the two is institutions are beginning to see the need and are doing more around it. Definitely a lot of room for improvement. I guess that's why we're here today, just to learn from one another um, about how to just, you know, complement those two units. Thank you, Abigail, and you've really given us um, some, some food for thought there in terms of what has been changing and what, what is bringing this thinking up about. And I'd just like Dr. Amatifo to jump in and, you know, he, he, he runs the, um, the Center for Entrepreneurship and Small Enterprise Development. And uh, Dr. Amatifo, what have you seen as, as the gaps, even as you have been working to establish small enterprises? Talk to us about the mindset. Talk, talk to us about uh, the gaps in skills in, you know, just give us a, a picture from your experience. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Cecilia. Uh, I, I want to look at this gap in two ways. Uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, what are we creating students to be? One, to be employers or to be employees? When it comes to employers, I think a lot of universities have done a very good job. A lot of universities have done a very good job when it comes to creating students to become employees. But then when it comes to creating students to be employers, that is where I think we have a little bit of a problem. And that is where I see the gap to be. I mean, majority of universities, when I, I mean, basically in Ghana, we have about 25 public universities. 15 uh, traditional universities and 10 converted universities from polytechnic into technical universities. A lot of them are doing some form of employability. A lot of them are doing some form of entrepreneurship that has created students for, for the job market. But as to whether we are creating students to become employers is where the problem is. Uh, recently, we did a study in the University of Cape Coast where um, we, 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 we conducted a study uh, among 5,000 students and to find out the student intention as to whether they want to be, they want to start businesses or not. Only 7% of the student population did mention that they want to be employers. So the question is, who employs them? The 93% who employs them? So when we have a student population like this, then there is a need for us to have a national policy, a national debate to look at the structure and curriculum that we have. Where do we even start teaching entrepreneurship? 
That's also the question. Majority of our students enter the university for the first time, and that is the first time they hear the word entrepreneurship. From the very basic level, from senior high school, et cetera, basically you have nothing being done. When we are talking about 21st century skill, entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity is very instrumental. But unfortunately, we don't have this in our basic level. Several years ago in the basic level, you have courses like agricultural science, you have courses like technical skills, etc. cetera. In most, in most uh, countries, those courses are faded off. And anytime I want to start a lecture for a new group of students, especially level 100 students, first year students, I give them a paper to fold into something meaningful. And you have majority of the students folding this into kites, plane, et cetera. And the follow-up question is, at what age did you learn how to do this? And then they'll say, oh, class one, class two, class one, class. So the question is, if you are in the university and at the age of 20, or 21 years. That means 15 years on, what you learn in class one or at the elementary level, nothing, no amount of creativity has been added. This is a problem we have. So the question is, what are we doing as a country in Africa to stimulate the growth of entrepreneurship among the youth? The youth are refusing to go into our Greek. The youth are refusing to go into agro processing. Universities are refusing to review their curriculum. It will surprise you. Here in my university, it took us a very long time before we got the policy of entrepreneurship to be run for a semester. But if you have a university student to train for a semester, how, what can you do? What can you impact? It is basically just looking at the mindset. The mindset is very good. But can we start talking about skills development? I believe at a very basic level, we need to let the students acquire some skills before they come to the university. Then the university probably can offer them the practical experience, uh, changing curriculum to inculcate trans transdisciplinary uh, 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 programs, et cetera. And I believe uh, this, this may be the way to go. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Matifo. That's a very good picture that you've painted for us there, that um, what are we doing to, to stimulate this? Are we building skills? Are we developing skills? And it's scary to think that from class two, um, nothing has been done to add on to that. Aravinda, I'm coming to you because there's definitely a need for us to identify what are these relevant skills, right? But does it go back to, does it have something to do with how we define employability? locally, globally, and you know, what are your thoughts around that? How do we define, how might we define employability? And, and, and how do we now identify what are these skills that, that need to be captured? Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Cecilia. And that was very interesting from um, Dr. Edward. But so just to address your question and to make it a little interesting, uh, Cecilia, typically what I like to ask our students is to visualize what an employable person would look like. So, I mean, can they tell by looking if someone is more employable than another or employable at all? I ask them this question all the time and maybe they can, but uh, it typically needs an evaluation of the intangibles. So I tell them it's like your personality, your attributes, your knowledge, your skills, et cetera, that can really help gauge um, your employability quotient. So essentially an employable person has a greater chance of getting employed but more importantly, a greater chance of succeeding in their chosen career job or industry. And this would be someone who, of course, has the right skills, qualifications, the work experiences, the right references. But again, the right transferable skills, as we are calling them nowadays, the communication skills, collaboration skills, their learning ability and also their learning agility then their leadership and their critical thinking skills. On top of it, I also encourage them to showcase lots of motivation, um, a great work ethic and uh, a strong ambition. So this is typically what all of us talk about or think about when we are talking about employability skills. But to go back to the question to say, where does entrepreneurship now fall into all of this? So I've come to realize that 
for myself, entrepreneurship is an important aspect of evaluating somebody's employability. It's an important dimension, potentially. So the ability to identify opportunity, to take risks, to be creative and innovate and use problem solving. These are all, I think, highly desirable traits in an employable uh, person. And I think if we all shared our wish lists, these would also repeatedly appear when you ask them what makes somebody employable. So what are these? These are all traits of an entrepreneurial mindset. And like somewhere I read, and going back to what Dr. Edward said again to say, this goes beyond preparing our students and graduates for conventional employment. So now this is about employable students and graduates who can create their own opportunities, succeed in them, and then contribute to economic growth and innovation. So we are not relying on anybody. We are not making students and graduates rely on external factors to drive innovation and economic growth. They are creating these opportunities themselves. And I think this is one way that we can include entrepreneurship uh, in the employability dialogue that we are having at educational institutions and career services departments. So yeah, hopefully that helps demystify. It does. Thank you. Thank you, Aravinda. Thank you for that. Absolutely. I think just helping them um, identify these skills within them is, is, is core to what we should be doing. Um, I'm seeing some, some comments on the chat that um, Ruth is saying that at our school, we are only teaching entrepreneurship theory for two hours in a week. So I guess, Ruth, you mean it should be taught more, right? Um, and Emmanuel is saying that it seems we are unknowingly becoming saboteurs of our own development uh, by scrapping those. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I'd like us to shift um, gears into, you know, programming and practical things that we can begin to do. And <clears throat> Abigail, I'd like to move back to you. Um, would you please help us explore how our institutions can, can begin to leverage uh, or can leverage more um, uh, entrepreneurship and career development to maximize the employability of our students, really just preparing them for success, right? Uh, for success um, into the world of work. And Abigail, feel free to give us a glimpse into what Ashesi is doing. Absolutely, thank you so much, Cecilia. Yeah. So first of all, just to say that Ashesi is still learning, so we're excited to be in this session. Um, but Ashesi as an institution looks at employability on three levels or in three tracks. So first of all, it's um, students who graduate and, and working, end up working in an organization, but also those who are, have started their own businesses as well as those who are in grad school. So we look at three tracks when we are measuring employability for, for um, our institution. And um, in Ashesi, we have an entrepreneurship ecosystem and the career services department or unit is within that. So we are supporting students within that ecosystem. And what does career services do in this ecosystem? We are actually, um, so if you look at the, the process of career development, um, from self-knowledge to self-discovery, skill building, then exploration, right? That's experiential learning, then into finally decision-making. And so regardless of which pathway a student ends up choosing, whether entrepreneurship, whether working in an organization, we are providing the opportunity for them to first of all identify. I think that's um, just um, similar to something that um, was just shared, that um, depending, it doesn't matter which pathway they, they, they choose, they have to first understand that which pathway am I more geared towards, understanding myself, then as well building skill within myself and competences to ensure that when I get there, whether I'm going to explore entrepreneurship or going to work in an organization, I can excel, right? So um, the advantage of understanding, because we are looking at, even if you're going to go the entrepreneurial route, right? There are two specific aspects to look at, the technical side, but also the soft skill side, because the advantage of understanding the workplace in terms of systems and structures and people management Right, understanding the functions from a, a user experience is very critical to your success as an entrepreneur, right? Even before you move into like a managerial role. And if you look at skill building, which is around, for example, building a CV, a CV is helping not just for going into an, an organization for an entrepreneur as well. How do you build a portfolio? How do you pitch yourself? How do you pitch your business? 
how do you interview, interviewing skills, right? How do you interview um, or sell yourself to a prospective client or a, a prospective uh, business? How are you going to even exit college successfully to go and then what is your life plan, right? How do you use LinkedIn to, to market your business? How do you brand yourself as an entrepreneur, personal branding? Uh, business etiquette, your own personal grooming, dining etiquette. If you were supposed to meet a client over, over dinner, do you know how you to manage, you know, all of that, right? So these are skills that we think just spread across the spectrum, regardless of which career pathway that you choose as a student. And so for career services, we are, we focus strongly on that. And when we, we also do coaching and mentoring in the coaching process, when we identify students interest within entrepreneurship, apart from all what I've just shared that we do, we are also connecting them to our entrepreneurship center, right? So Ashati has a, a strong um, academic program in the first year called uh, Foundation of Design and Entrepreneurship, which is for most students, the opportunity for them to get a deeper insight and understanding into, into entrepreneurship, right? So we then get a lot of questions from students and we are more than happy we connect them to the entrepreneurship center where they are going to build additional skills, right? Um, because the entrepreneurship center is offering, um, for example, venture accelerators, venture incubators, there's an entrepreneurship fund, there's simulation sessions, even the ability to identify a problem, propose a solution, create a prototype, test it out. You know, how do you even look for funding and you know, financial opportunity to support your business, right? So these are very specific um, skill building um, experiences that the entrepreneurship center would also support the student with. So that's how we kind of work in tandem in the Shesi. Um, in terms of some of the, I'm just mentioning two um, very practical things we're currently doing. So for example, a Shesi Career Services has a mentoring program, a career mentoring program. And this program in, involves or has mentors from industry as well as our alumni network. And we support the entrepreneurship center with mentors for the entrepreneurs, right? Um, we are we're currently talking about creating a centralized mentors database to help students connect or to, to help students, um, you know, assess mentors regardless of which pathway that they choose. So that's something that's still work in progress. We also are helping the, um, the center or the students who are going to the center with internship opportunities. So for example, recently we helped them with um, some engineering students who needed to get some um, industry experience, right, uh, for a project they were working on. We are currently talking about a coordinated internship program because we see the benefit or the value in, yes, creating all those simulation opportunities for the entrepreneurs so or students who are studying entrepreneurship, but the, uh, the, the opportunity for them to, to get some work experience in small or medium-sized um, organizations or companies where they are part of the growing things, understand what it means to build the systems, what does recruitment mean in, in such a, a system, financial modeling, et cetera, right? So they are part of the process so that yeah. they get an experiential learning into that. We have, yeah. during our career fair, we have a, a competition called Ashesi's Most Entrepreneurship Business Pitch, right? And which is um, an opportunity for student businesses to, to, to um, pitch before um, judges and get some awards. And this year, for example, we had all our judges being um, um, the um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship Center team, which was great. So these are just some ways that we collaborate. We also invite industry and employers to students' capstone presentations, their business exhibitions for finding opportunities, growth opportunities, definitely more room to improve. But these are just some of the ways that we are currently connecting with our Entrepreneurship Center and we're looking forward to seeing how we can even continue to do that more uh, through this conversation. Thank you so much, Cecilia. Hey, thank you, Abigail. That's such a great picture into what you're doing. And I think um, the next few, very few minutes that we have, I'll invite um, Aravinda and then Dr. Matifo to give us a perspective into what they're doing, what they're saying in their own institutions. And I really love what Abigail, you said about you, you, you having an entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial ecosystem, so that it's 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 an ecosystem, and we're talking about collaborated efforts. So let's let's see what's happening at uh, at Boso and um, at UCC, because I I think we need to start thinking ecosystem wise, right? And 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 we've just been told that, that a research was done, Aravinda, and seven percent were like, I I think I can do I can be an entrepreneur. 
but 93% were happy to sit in the calm waters of employment. Employment that needs to be generated and created by somebody. So, um, have you not tell us, share with us your model, the model in your institution, and just help us see how, how our career services departments can, can, can rethink um, their services towards an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and maybe are there skill sets that we need to build? Maybe Dr. Matifo, you handle that. Because I think we also need to upskill ourselves. I'm, I'm listening with the years of a career services specialist and I'm like, whoa, I need to build up some skills, right? Over to you, Aravinda, and then hand over to Dr. Matifo very quickly because of time. Thanks, uh, Cecilia. Um, I just wanted to share some interesting statistics that we found about when we did our PT employability assessment two years ago with IFC. And we came to know that more than 80% of our students, I think the number was around 82 or 88% of our students stated that they joined both the university because they wanted to start their own businesses. Now, I just wanted to share this because this is not something that we ourselves knew. So it's sometimes good to do these assessments to see what the market is thinking about you, what your students are saying. And we realized that perhaps inadvertently or maybe very, very deliberately, we had been sending signals to the market to say that we are serious about entrepreneurship. And honestly, I mean, there's always scope for improvement, it, but it really made us feel like, okay, we are going in the right direction. And so the time and energy that we are spending on talking on entrepreneurship related initiatives is worth it. Um, and so that kind of made it, you know, the decision even easier to say, should we continue doing what we're doing? And the answer was a resonating yes. Um, going back to saying that, you know, what can institutions and how can career services departments uh, offer entrepreneurial services as part of their, um, you know, uh, service delivery. I think it's very easy to get lost in all that can be done. There's just so much out there. And coming to sessions like this as well, already my mind is bursting with the number of things that I want to do or our teams can do. But very importantly, I, I would like to mention five quick things that I think we started off with and some specific examples again to say how we going to how we attempted addressing those areas. Now institutions can take this list. It's by no means uh, exhaustive, but it helps to just have a checklist to start off with. So the first is to have some form of a guideline or a framework to keep your efforts on track. So like I said, there's so many things you can do. But where are you going to start with? So at Bothu University, what we devised was an employability wish list, as we call it. And that's the Bothu graduate profile. And it's also available on our website. So the way we started using this in the past few years is to anchor all our employability and entrepreneurship initiatives and ensure that anything we do always comes back to the BGP in some form or the other. So there is a definite outcome to be achieved and it ensures that ideas that are good on paper, but somehow don't link back to this BGP framework are discussed as nice to haves, but the ones that we would prioritize are the ones that do link back somehow. So it helps us keep in check. And then if you're talking entrepreneurship, then it's like Abigail was also mentioned, it's very important to expose your students to entrepreneurship programming, entrepreneurship courses in some form of the other. They need that exposure to the concept of setting up a business, ideation, market analysis, financial planning, so on and so forth. So at both the university, again, what we've done is we've developed a very practical entrepreneurship module through our faculty of business and accounting and some experts from industry who are well known in the entrepreneurship space. And we've created this very practical model that is embedded in every program that we offer. So you can be studying health or engineering, but everybody gets to experience the whole idea of entrepreneurship. And earlier this year, we even started offering a social entrepreneurship module. So now students have more options. But what we see in Cecilia is that by doing something like this as part of your curriculum, it sometimes triggers a student who may have never ventured into entrepreneurship to start considering it. And to the others, it may make it very clear that this is not something for me. But at the end of the day, both of them develop some very important entrepreneurial traits in the process of actually going through a module like this. The other thing that I wanted to mention, number three, is experiential learning. So um, hands-on teaching, learning opportunities, internships, 
So at both the university, we have internships that are again mandatory, embedded in all programs of study, and we've been doing this for 10 years now. And the career services department is actually responsible for the administration of these mandatory, we call them again, the Botho graduate profile internships. So the BGP internships, again, linking back to our employability wish list. And again, we also have piloted some work integrated learning approaches. So students spend half their time in industry in a semester and half their time in the class. All of this uh, helps build you know, these entrepreneurial traits, a culture of innovation, which are again, part of that BGP wish list that I was talking about. And then the fourth thing is business incubation support. So if your students and graduates have ideas, what we are doing is we are supporting them. We have that entrepreneurship development unit. Um, glad to see that we're not alone in this and many institutions here potentially are doing the same. Uh, where we have support for our students with business ideas. So we give them mentorship, access to mentors, um, networking opportunities, training, support, et cetera. We've had six cohorts from our incubator that have um, come out with varying degrees of success. But now we're taking it a step further. And we're now partnering with external, more well-established, higher expertise incubators at national level to make sure that our students now have a pathway. So we are creating a pipeline to these incubators and we are playing our part in nurturing entrepreneurship. So that's also very important learning. You don't have to do everything yourself or everything in-house. It's good to find partners and know where your capacity lies and focus on that and no need to reinvent the wheel. So partnerships and engagement in this space with other entrepreneurial players is also something that we're very keenly focusing on um, this year. And then the last thing is sharing success stories and encouraging discussion on entrepreneurship. So we constantly bring our student and graduate entrepreneurs to talk about this to other students who may be considering this, but are too scared because the fear of failure with entrepreneurship is is very high, or at least, um, you know, that's the perception. So we are trying to promote this communication. And I think at the very least, our successful student and graduate entrepreneurs and those who did not succeed, mm -hmm. showcase that it's something they can consider, at least as a career option. And this widens the realm of possibilities when it comes to employment opportunities for our students. So going back to saying that you don't always, and what Ed, you know uh, Edward said and what Abigail is saying, it's not just about trying to ask somebody to keep you meaningfully engaged. There are other possibilities for you to do so. And the only way you will know is by trying it out. So we give them that safe space to try it out within the institution first yeah. um, with minimal risk of failure and try to figure out whether this is for them. And if they do realize that, then they we also help them and support them to transition into, uh, you know, mainstreaming that idea. And I think okay. these are just some of the ways that I think institutions can consider how to start off or mm -hmm. to make progress from where they are in this, um, you know, offering entrepreneurship as part of their uh, career services programming. Great. Thanks, Cecilia. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And because of time, I'll just jump over to Dr. Amatifa and then we can put all these thoughts together. You're muted. You're muted. Yes, uh, sorry. Yes, Cecilia, I, I think uh, to add to what Abigail and then Rama has said is basically to look at management buy-in. You know, it's very instrumental for you to get policy making uh, policy makers agreeing to uh, have entrepreneurship running in the university. It's quite difficult, but if you are able to get management to buy in, that gives you about fifty to sixty percent of the work almost done. Because I mean, when you need it, when you need funding support, etc., you get management to understand why you need funding support for for projects or the projects that they have mentioned. Yep. So here at the University of Cape Coast, for instance, uh, the vice chancellor, current vice chancellor, as part of his first mission was to transform the university into an entrepreneurial university. And, and that was a good thing for us because then that was the first time we had an initiative uh, by uh, 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 we developing the design thinking hub where students' ideas, et cetera, are taken through the steps in design think, thinking and creativity. We also introduced uh, a common program for every student, irrespective of where you find yourself. Uh, every level 300 student in the university is currently reading a semester program of entrepreneurship just to change the mindset, you know, to 
Uh, so if you are a medical student, for instance, we have something we call bioentrepreneurship, Medilab, et cetera. So the various areas that you find yourself, I think there is something. In the University of Cape Coast, we, we look at entrepreneurship as a, as a passion, as a heart set, where we have defined it into three. One, you must have the mindset. Two, you must have the skill set. And three, there has to be a value set attached to it. So we look at three main components, the mindset. So how do you change the mindset of the student? Because all those years before they get to the university, the mindset has been theories, the mindset has been academic, the mindset has been, let me go to the university and get my first class and go. But how do you change this mindset to make students get some skills? You know? So now we're also focusing on skills and look, focusing on exactly what Abigail said, value proposition. How do you brand yourself? How do you package yourself, et cetera? Just recently, there was a policy passed on by Vice Chancellor who felt there was a need for us to inculcate the 21st century skills into our curriculum. So it was compulsory for every college, every faculty, every school, every department to re-strategize for accreditation. The university highlighted about five different uh, uh, 21st century skills. Uh, we had critical thinking, we had creativity, we had communication, collaboration and teamwork, personal and social skills, IT skills, et cetera, looking at the digital transformation. So, so every department within the university needed to go back and inculcate 21st century skills into the curriculum. It was tough, you know, change is not easy. I mean, it was tough for everybody, but at least finally we have achieved this and we're looking at uh, what comes out of it. I hope we are able to create the students with a needed mindset, with a needed asset, and with a needed skill set for our country. Thank you. Wonderful. Mindset, heart set, and skill set. So really, um, I'm looking at the, and we're just about to go into breakouts. I'm looking at the comment by um, Emmanuel, Robert Kiyosaki, entrepreneurship is a mindset first, skill set second, you know, and he's asking, how does this relate to our settings in terms of young people? Let's go into the breakouts and discuss. Let's see, let's see how, how, how is our mindset, our heart set, and our skill set? Where is it at? Yeah. Um, Grace, are we ready to go into breakouts? And I, I don't want anybody dropping off. Yes. Do, you, do, do uh -huh. you want me to share the question first? Oh, um, yes. I... Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Please project the question. I was about to send you off without a game plan. Okay. <laughs> Let me just share. Can you see my screen? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Grace. Yeah. So in our breakouts, we're going to talk about... Um, of course, we're gonna we're gonna share what's coming up for us. But two key outcomes are important as we come back from the breakout rooms. And the first is that we we want you to come up with two concrete steps that um, you can take to enhance the linkage between entrepreneurship and career services in your institutions. Um, I know a, a, ma a majority of you say that you're already doing something around this. Let's take it a, a notch higher, right? Let's, let's, okay, we are here. Now let's level it up. What's the next level for us? So two concrete steps that we can take from here. And then let's also look at two potential challenges and the mitigation measures, right? Um, some of us are in private institutions. Some of us are in public institutions. What challenges might we face there? Is there bureaucracy? Is there red tape? Is there thinking, uh, mindset, heart set, and skill set that we need to begin to build? So what are the two potential challenges and what are their mitigation measures? And then even as we go into the groups, we're going to have facilitators come in to assist us. But I, I want you to make sure that you have um, someone that you pick as, as, as your leader who will come back after we've, we've done the breakouts and just share a little bit of what came up. So no pressure. Nobody should feel under pressure. We are all colleagues here. Let's enjoy the breakouts and let's come back and share um, some key takeaways for us. And thank you for everybody who's posting on chat. Um, yeah, Abe, I see your, your comment on the UNESCO research. Grace, we're just waiting for you. Okay, okay. You're Are you ready? Back. Yes. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back. I see Abigail, your group is back. I'm um, seeing more people joining in. So we're just going to take a, a, a minute or so as they come in. 
And I hope you had a really good time, very fruitful conversation. Okay, great. Nice to see you all. Great, I think we, we are majority back uh, because we have a very short uh, amount of time left. I'll invite um, the different representatives from the different groups to just share in a minute. Is that possible? In a minute? <laughs> Let me keep the bar that way, that it's a minute. So to just tell us what, what came up. Um, if you want to mention one, one uh, action step, one concrete next step, and one challenge, that would be, that would be useful. Um, so one minute in a nutshell, I think um, we all agreed that the connection between entrepreneurship and uh, career development service is very important, that um, career development service and entrepreneurship must be um, um, a daily must be in the daily life of all teachers and profs. So they should teach students about entrepreneurship also in their courses, not only in career development service activities. And that we think it's also very important that we a align the curricula to the demand of the market, but on the same time, we think outside of the box and create new demands and new job opportunities. Thanks, Suzanne. That was great. Did you have any challenge? And I see Abe is back. Was that? Oh, Abe, please. Now, now Abe goes uh, is the head. <laughs> All right. So, so the challenge One that we point, have. Abe. One point. Okay. Okay. So the ch the challenge is that government would have to create um ecosystem. You know where um you know universities are more autonomous, so they can be able to innovate and 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 um, develop um curriculum that would meet their demand, as Suzanne said. Great. Thank you. Okay, noted, noted. Group two, Abigail's group. Who are yes. the representative? I'm, I'm representing. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so very quickly, I think um, like group one, we, it was, we saw the needs, very, very important. It's interesting, we had institution who have a career center, but prior to this conversation, had never thought of like entrepreneurship as part of that. So this conversation has been very useful to them. And then we also had an, an, an institution that had entrepreneurship and didn't have career services. So that, once again, this conversation has been extremely useful to a lot of people who've joined. Then we also have those who kind of already have something going, but some of the challenges mentioned were funding, right? How do you support all these great initiatives and innovations to support both um, 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 skill building in both areas, right? It takes money to create uh, incubators and all of those, right? Um, so how do you fund, how do you get funding? And I know some people had internal um, units that supported with funding. Some also had third party units that have were not integrated into the institution. And so they had funding and they are supporting with funding. Um, another way, uh, another um, funding opportunity was government. And an institution talked about how government had um, some incubator and funding. And so once it's, the students develop like the ideas and everything, the, they transferred it to the to government. And that kind of also made me remember that even there was a point where we're thinking of um, government, we had somebody from government come to tell us about so many funding opportunities available for um, entrepreneurs, student entrepreneurs, and we didn't know anything about it. But so it's how can we connect us well as we're thinking through these conversations, how can we support institutions in their different um, regions to understand what opportunities exist in the government sector that institutions could also connect with. So that's another area of opportunity, area of opportunity. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Abigail. Thank I'm sure we are all picking nuggets here and there because no, no two groups are the same. Great, group three. Who was in group three? Is this group three? Um, wow. Yeah, group three, so. group three has also. not come to play. <laughs> Dr. Ado, would you want to help us with it? Yes, please do it. Okay, all right. So the, one of the first steps we have identified is that there should be a review of the current university policies to properly align uh, with uh, entrepreneurship and career development goals. The second is entrepreneurship and career development should find expression in the overall strategic plan of the investors. And the third one is that there should be, we should incorporate entrepreneurship as part of the employability and career development uh, tracks of the investors uh, Dr. Prem mentioned that it has to be one of the life skills that the, sh the students uh, should possess. Okay, okay Stevie. Um, 
uh, go to I'll the go challenges, to the challenges yeah. and what are the mitigating uh, measures. One. So the first one is that students are hesitant of um, taking advantage of pitching opportunities that are available to them. So the, the, the one of the things that can be done to check this is that we should get alumni to, alumni to mm -hmm. share their uh, stories. I'm sure mm -hmm. that will be able to boost their confidence in taking advantage of those opportunities. Great. The second uh, uh, challenge that has, was identified was uh -huh. funding, funding for okay. innovative ideas. And that we also identify that students can also take advantage of uh, funding opportunities. For instance, Cosmos, for instance, is doing something great. You talked about funding. Okay. Okay, Stephen. Okay, great. We can move on. Thank you, Group 3. Thank you. We appreciate I um, mean, that funding aspect is really coming across uh, all the groups. Uh, group four, group four. That's my group. Um, okay. I think uh, Rita is sharing the screen and uh, Jesse from Carnegie Mellon is, I think, presenting. Great, thank you. Please yeah, go we ahead, talked Jesse. about um, concrete steps for students, in, students who are uh, working in, on entrepreneurship to basically share their experiences and startups with each other. So we um, saw several institutions already doing that through startup pitch days, sometimes incorporated with a career fair and also uh, having startup companies to present at career fairs alongside bigger, uh, alongside bigger companies. Um, and we noted that a challenge is to find sufficient mentors for students who are um, beginning startups so that they get the right expertise and advice. Um, also difficulties in teaching entrepreneurship and making it practical so the students um, get, the, get the practice they need and not just uh, sort of esoteric lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and we also talked a little about access to funding, which I think has been covered well. Yeah. It's a thread that's come, cutting across. Also, the unavailability of mentors, because even at, at, at USIU where I serve, we run mentorship programs and we are always falling short of mentors who can who we can match with our students. So thank you all for on behalf of everybody, everybody else because of stepping up and doing this. Uh, and thank you to all our panelists. Probably before we 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 close this session, I will I will invite questions. Anybody who Anybody who wants to voice over something, um, a question directly to our panelists? Anybody? Um, Cecilia, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. One thing that stood out for us in group four was the fact that there's a myth that exists between vocation and entrepreneurship and the inability of um, stakeholders in the educational space to descend between this two, these two, um, the difference that exists between vocation and entrepreneurship, because mostly um, people mistaken vocation to be entrepreneurship. So I think this would be a conversation that we could have later or if facilitators could and, um, explain more or delve deep by into that, it will also be great. Okay, so I think uh, Grace, we are noting that question, that input, difference between vocation and entrepreneurship. Thank you for that contribution. Do we have another one? Do we have an Ab Abdullah? Hello, yes, yes. Yeah. Abdullah, yes, Abdullah is here. Yes, uh, my contribution is with regards to the creation of entrepreneurial mindset. I'm thinking that uh, if we could start creating the mindset, even when, while students are in the high school, that would be much, much better for us so that when they get into the university, by which time they are well prepared to pursue um, entrepreneurship education. I'm saying, in this because when you take just just pose it to what the, the earlier speaker said in the high school are courses called vocation for example and then you have a course for example call, called home economics but in actual fact when you want to look at it from an entrepreneurial perspective you might call that a fashion business or a hospitality business you know or a restaurant business you know but 
the mindset there is that I'm learning home economics. And actually, when you look at the books, you see that you're being taught how to lay a bed in a house instead of how to lay a bed in a hotel, for example. So I think we could take it a notch higher by trying to look at uh, how we could even bring this conversation of entrepreneurial mindset, even at the high school, where we could look at agri, for example, we call it agriculture. Why not agribusiness? So that from the onset, that young person has that entrepreneurial mindset and he starts taking it seriously and then get into the university and by which time you could even build a business out of that. So that's my little contribution mm. to the discussion. Love that. Home economics <laughs> vis-a-vis hospitality. Okay, great. Um, also, the, yeah. I've seen on chat uh, the clear difference between entrepreneurship and self-employment. Anyone from our panel who'd like to respond to that on chat, please feel free. Um, I see Emmanuel. Emmanuel, you'll be our last um, person to speak. And then Grace, please drop in our session evaluation. As we're going through this, please fill in our session evaluation so that we can know what, what really um, worked for you and what we can improve in future. Thank you, Grace. Emmanuel, go ahead. Thank you very much, Cecilia. Um, please, my question is, in, in, in regard to the transition, uh, most of the time when students are in the colleges, transition from the classroom to the labor force become an issue. I don't know whether it's uh, a problem with the lack of entrepreneurial training or uh, I don't really know. But my observation is if there can be a way, like a sort of the internship or apprenticeship, where right before the graduation or maybe a year or two prior to that, we can incorporate some kind of vacation apprenticeship or trainship because sometimes people gain experience on the job without necessarily having the knowledge from the classroom. So is it a way that we can incorporate those with the careful set, with those with the knowledge base and blend them and get a semi-formal kind of uh, distribution pattern in the ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody from the panel who'd like to respond or do we do we wrap up? I like that last comment uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in micro credentials. You know, there are people who've been working in, in areas where they've become experts, but they don't have any papers. How do we acknowledge them? How do we bring them into the main system when they need to? Um, Anand, to me, entrepreneurship is the ability to take measured risk to create value. This does not require one to be self-employed, absolutely. And I think we also know there's an aspect of entrepreneurship uh, that even as we're training our, our young people to be entrepreneurs, for those who want to go into, into mainstream work, I mean, they can be entrepreneurs within their organizations and also work to catalyze opportunities and create opportunities for many more. Um, Aravinda, I think a difference between self-employment and entrepreneurship is that the latter, will necessitate about innovation and creativity. Uh, do they themselves have entrepreneurial mindset and skills? Okay, I'm hearing there's a lot. This conversation is becoming deeper and deeper and, and it's great, uh, but guys, we, we gotta go. Um, but thank you so much for your input. Um, again, reactions, can we appreciate our panelists and everybody else who, who has participated? Thanks, 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 everybody. I love the energy in the room. Uh, but before we go, we're not done yet. We have like 10 minutes, guys, 10 minutes, just 10 minutes. Um, I'd like you to make sure you have filled in the evaluation for the session. And I'd also love for us to take a, a, a photo. And as we are organizing ourselves to come on video, for those who are able to please come on video, uh, I will welcome Dr. Matifu to talk about the the convening, the annual EduCollab convening in, in Ghana that's taking place from, from uh, June 13th. Doc, are you ready? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you, Cecilia. And uh, what a wonderful host. Thanks so well. Yes, um, on the 13th to the 16th of June, uh, the University of Cape Coast is hosting the career employment. Ability track, 
there are about four different tracks and the University of Cape Coast has been given the mandates to host the career and um, employability track. And in that section, there are about, we have about five or six different sections. Uh, some of the things we'll be looking at is uh, to dive into the Kepler Soft Skills uh, Center. Uh, Kepler, for instance, uh, has done a very good job to uh, 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 identify some soft skills that they have run over the years. They have tested this in Rwanda and Ethiopia. And uh, we're trying to do a similar thing in Ghana to find out whether those soft skills can be basically uh, uh, soft skills that uh, we can agree on that uh, it's needed by students. We also have another se section that is looking at the system change approach to building an ecosystem of employability development. And uh, the University of Cape Coast is blessed. I mean, uh, we joined our mentor is Ashasi mentoring institution at Shasi. We had a very good mentor, Abigail. And uh, through her mentorship, we realized that there are a lot of things that public universities need to understand. We have identified the systems within our university and work around the system to bring change. For instance, I did mention the design thinking part. Uh, we also have a, a program that is giving the uh, uh, students uh, some skills is known as the GCAP, and we have merged this to create an environment where so far we have trained close to about 800 students uh, to have some skills in the, to have some soft skills. And we'll be sharing uh, some of these soft skills uh, in the, in during the June convening. We also have other universities that have been mentored by uh, uh, Ada, uh, Rwanda, uh, uh, Rwanda Polytechnic is one of them. Uh, we have also uh, BIT, uh, we have uh, uh, Borga Te uh, Technical Universities. These are all mentee institutions who want to share their experiences to a roundtable discussion during the convening. We're also looking at the role of mentorship in facilitating institutional learning and system change in employability. There are wonderful topics and I want to entreat everybody to join the career and employability section during the June convening. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I invite Abigail to talk about the community of practice, employability community of practice. And Abigail, you'll take note of a comment on chat that you can respond to from Ruth later on chat. Okay, so I haven't seen the comment on chat. But um, so the, the communities of practice for employability is essentially um, a work group of educators, of experts, um, other stakeholders, so other institutions like yourselves. And we just are looking at how can we support one another, develop modules and tools uh, for holistic career development or career departments within our institutions. How can we design and implement practical um, career services programming for our students and also just taking through innovation around our programming, collaborating through workshops and events. And um, we are really excited about it and looking forward. So as many of you who can join the community of practice, we'll be really excited to do that. I don't know if there's um, a link that can be put in the chat. Okay, it's in the chat already. Yes. To join our employability community of practice is a great way to just support one another. The conversations we are having today, um, um, organize, sorry, institutions that are looking at starting some of these systems, learning from each other, the place to be is the employability committee of practice. So please use the link in the chat to sign up um, um, so that we can all have continuing conversations. And I know during the convening as well, there's going to be a conversation around this similar topic, like Edward has shared, um, a follow-up conversation on that. So we'll really like to engage all of you in the committee of practice if we can. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Abigail. Much appreciated. We'd like to do the photo. I see everybody's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll do the photo. Majority. Dai, come on for the photo. You are part of this. We've co created this together, right? So, if everyone is ready, three, two, one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Over to you, Grace. Thank you so much, Cecilia. This was a very 
an interesting, insightful session and grateful for your time for taking the time to join today's session. There's going to be a follow-up on this particular topic at a June convening on June 15th. It's going to be a one-hour session and it will be led by Dr. Peter Bamkoli, who is the moderator. He was in the session today. I don't know if he's still on, but the topic for that session is entrepreneurship entrepreneurial skills is not only for entrepreneurs, preparing students for the world of work. And in that space, you have the opportunity to reflect on your learnings and to work on some of these strategies that we've talked about. Um, and we are looking forward to meeting you at the convening. We are excited. Um, I've dropped the email in the, um, in the chat if you have a question. Okay, Dr. Bamkole is on. Maybe he can say something briefly. It's a session. Um, Okay, uh, good evening all, or oh, good afternoon, I'm, I'm in Nairobi right now. Uh, just to say that if there is only one session that will be this session during the June convening, it's going to be this one. So I look forward to seeing you all there. Have a nice one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Don't forget to fill the um, evaluation is very important so that we can um, improve upon some of these speaker sessions that we have. Please join the committees of employability committees of practice we would have a session at a June convening on June 13th. So it will be really great for you to join that. We'd we'll also be sending out a survey on employability. So you'll be receiving that survey in your emails. So please, where you see them, would be happy if you can fill it so that we know the needs um, or, uh, for employability in the institutions that we are working with um, to build the systems and structures like Cecilia has already mentioned. Okay, so that's it. I'm looking forward to welcoming you at the June convening. Thank you so much speakers, panelists, um, every single person. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.